Yes, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I rise today to speak on the Australian Greens National Integrity Commission Bill 2013, introduced by my colleague Senator Rhiannon. I'd like to start by acknowledging the hard and persistent work of Senator Rhiannon in fighting to establish transparency and accountability in our government governance arrangements. And of course, this Greens bill is a significant part of that work. Let's start by acknowledging the nature of, the, of one of the major problems we're confronting in this arena. Political donations have now become an endemic part of our political culture. Year by year, um, uh, government by government, we've actually seen the increasing importance and influence of those who would make political donations to political parties. Big oil, big gas, big coal, big pharmaceutical, big retail, big agriculture, media barons, banking tycoons, property developers. These terms have become part of our uh, everyday lexicon, not because the corporations and individuals involved in these industries are merely going about the day-to-day -day running of a private sector business. But in fact, they've uh, earned these names and this familiarity uh, because of the manipulation by some of these players uh, of the most sacred of democratic values, and that is the ability of those who are elected in a position of trust to govern and make decisions in the national interest to govern in the national interest, to govern in the interests of the people who elect them. In my own home state of South Australia, um, we've seen in recent times the pernicious influence of property developers bearing gifts in the form of political donations and the um, uh, effect on the state planning process, which has resulted in decisions that have manifestly not been um, principled and based on good policy, but indeed reflect the degree of um, generosity uh, of those who have made those donations. Of course, the fundamental idea and the wonderful idea of a representative democracy is that elected representatives are ultimately accountable to the voters, to those people who put their trust and their faith in them by voting for them at an election. And the fundamental idea is that the decisions that those elected representatives will make in the chambers of parliament will reflect the will and the interests and the well-being uh, of the electorate. But instead, we have a system that is being increasingly skewed. Because of our system of political donations, third-party campaigns and media quid pro quos, we too often have a government that looks at after the interests of the big end of town, those who actually have the influence, the power and the finances to assist them to stay in power, and that's at the expense of everyday Australians who do not have those same resources to uh, influence, influence the decision making. And let's be absolutely clear about this. This problem isn't limit, limited to the current government. Political donations and excessive influence um, has been a blight on governments, both Conservative and Labor, um, in the past. And therefore, although it would be uh, easy to attribute um, the blame for the failings of previous governments and any uh, failings of the current government to a um, simplistic view that it's a lack of moral backbone or some kind of um, sinister personalities, the, the truth is that the problem goes uh, much deeper and we actually need a sophisticated and thoughtful solution to this because it's systemic. It's the fact that it does in fact, it does in fact um, cost money and require resources to be able to mount an election campaign to enable people to be um, elected to represent their constituencies in the parliament. Even the best and noblest of characters in our current political environment, and I believe that there are, there are, very, there are decent good people um, in all, um, uh, all political parties in this parliament, but even the, the best and noblest of characters are caught up in a system that has perverse incentives to ultimately, um, I suppose, uh, well, look for ways to raise um, the money and the resources that are needed to be able to mount uh, an election campaign. The ultimate dilemma is that political campaigns cost money and election-winning campaigns cost a lot of money. 
Although the Greens have argued previously for a clear solution to this issue, and that is, the, that is transparent, that is accountable um, public funding for election campaigns in order to um, reduce the influence and to reduce the necessity for special interests, this has consistently fallen on deaf ears in this parliament. As an alternative or indeed an adjunct to that proposal, which is still very much the Greens' um, point of view, because uh, unless we can do away with the need to raise money from those who are wealthy and have influence, we're going to always have this issue about um, where the line is drawn. But as an adjunct to that, my colleague Senator Rhiannon and the Australian Greens are proposing um, this bill today before the Senate that would see the creation of a National Integrity Commission. <clears throat> Although the system of donations um, would continue in the absence of agreement that there be public funding for election campaigns, the National Integrity Commission, or what has been nicknamed um, the Federal ICAC Independent Commission Against Corruption, would provide um, necessary scrutiny and oversight to ensure that our system of donations doesn't override the right of the Australian people, the fundamental and important right of the Australian people to accountable government. So importantly, we can look around and see um, the value of other independent commissions against corruptions and what they have been able to achieve um, in the relatively short period of time in which they've been in existence in Australia. So we've seen the New South Wales ICAC which has been able to uncover property developers in cahoots with elected officials. No one could argue that that was in the public interest. Nepotistic appointments to so-called independent bodies. Um, and when you have a nepotistic appointment to an independent body, you can be pretty sure that the person appointed will have writing instructions. There will be favours. There will be um, a loyalty involved in, after that appointment. We've seen donations from coal and gas companies that happened to coincide with the issuing of mining licences. There's so much evidence of um, what, can be, what, what occurs and then what um, is able to be um, revealed through the effective use of independent commissions against corruption. And although in New South Wales, for instance, this has led to an understandable disenchantment with the political class in New South Wales, it was and is a necessary step towards the rehabilitation of our political culture so that any of us who is a representative a parliamentarian can hold our heads high and know that, in fact, we are um, making principled, evidence-based, good policy decisions in the national interest on, the par on, on behalf of the Australian electorate, the people who elect us. So the question remains, why are both the old parties um, against this bill that the Greens are proposing? Surely um, the elimination of special interests and rent seekers um, serves us all, serves us all in the parliament but also serves um, the Australian electorate. It would stop what is an endless race to the bottom where the party who can uh, sell out the most for private industry donations is the one with the most funds for campaigning. Nobody wins from this process. This bill would serve to level the playing field so that even if the culture of donations did continue, um, all politicians could have the confidence that they can say no and, in fact, would be, um, would be well advised to say no to the mo more egregious requests from business and the deals that otherwise um, get done behind closed doors. If all parties know that corruption, quid pro quos and the manipulation of impartial regulation will potentially come to light, will lead to penalties, will lead to media outrage and will lead to some of the, in fact, some of the um, consequences that we've seen recently in relation to the Choppergate scandal um, and the negative political consequences that accompany them, it would no longer be in the political interests of those persons to break the rules and the norms of ethical and good governance um, just because they have big donors asking them to do so. This isn't about blame. This is actually a proactive measure that the Australian Greens are introducing here today. It's not about blame. It's not about scapegoating. It's about looking forward. It's about fundamentally reforming our system to make it fair, to deal with, to deal with the, the problem that um, we've identified, which is that uh, there, is, there are uh, incentives in our current system to um, allow people, to allow um, in, powers, powerful interests with um, deep pockets to uh, unduly influence the political decision-making that affects every uh, Australian in the way they go about living their lives. 
We want a system that's fair for the Australian people, that's fair for Australian politicians, and ultimately, ultimately in the interests of Australian business, because Australian business also relies on the continued confidence of people in our political institutions in order to maintain the, uh, the peaceful and prosperous conditions of their own success in, in a democracy like Australia. Uh, one of the things that struck me when I was first elected to parliament was the incredible trust that the voters um, who voted for me, which resulted in me being in the Senate, that, that they place um, when they, they put their, their mark on the ballot papers at an election. It's, um, it's a trust, I think, that if you unpack it, you would find, if you ask people, they would say, by choosing to vote for that particular person or that particular party, there are certain expectations lying behind that, and they will be that that person or that party will actually um, rise above particular naked self-interest and try to make decisions, try to ch make changes, try to introduce and modify legislation in a greater interest, in the interests of at least those people who vote for them, but more broadly, um, in some ways, looking at the, the national interest, looking at the long-term interests of um, the Australian, Australian society. Um, and indeed, increasingly, I think there is um, a, a sense of scepticism among Australians and a sense of uh, a loss of faith, to some extent, in the ethics. Um, of government and in the, in the ethics of elected representatives, and I find that very sad because ultimately that, that will erode respect for democracy. Um, and I think um, the other thing that people perhaps are more concerned about now over time is, the, is really understanding that the ability of sovereign governments to be able to take long-term broad views about what is indeed in the national interest has been undermined by the influence of very powerful interests. Um, and an example I'd call on there is what happened in relation to the mining tax that the previous um, Rudd government attempted to introduce um, in the interest of trying to recoup a fair share of Australia's um, mining resources for the benefit of all Australians and not um, so predominantly uh, for the benefit of shareholders who happen to be living in countries outside Australia. And, um, and what we saw there was a, a concentrated and very, very powerful and incredibly well-resourced campaign from the mining interest to undermine, to undermine the thrust of that legislation. And there was a lot of commentary at the time about whether or not that heralded and highlighted the real difficulty for sovereign governments in nation states to be able to, in the future, take principled steps in the long-term national interests that would actually um, uh, be in conflict with the short-term but very powerful interests of um, corporations, which are often multinational corporations and actually have no allegiance and no loyalty to any particular nation-state. And I think that question is still very much a live question, and it's it's a it's a very sobering thought to think that perhaps. Um, if we do not do something to, to, to change the balance about powerful interests and the ability of elected representatives to actually govern in the genuine national interest, where will that leave us in the future, especially in this century when we are being beset by so many immediate and urgent challenges, which are essentially almost existential? How are we going to survive, um, given many of the, the challenges, human population and the environmental challenges that we face? I'd like to come back now to a particular example, a particular concrete and, and, uh, and, and perhaps less uh, widespread example of where it was clear to me that a federal ICAC could change our political process for the better. Um, and that was um, an inquiry of the, of the Legal and Constitutional Affairs Senate References Committee into um, the work undertaken by the Australian Federal Police's Oil for Food Task Force. I was the chair of the committee and it was a Greens initiated inquiry. And uh, it looked into the um, AFP's uh, Oil for Food Task Force um, and why ultimately it didn't have um, the uh, consequences, it didn't, have, it didn't achieve the outcomes that a lot of people had expected it might achieve in terms of getting to the bottom of what had happened in relation to the oil for food scandal, which was atrocious in and of itself, but then the proceedings and investigations of, uh, into that um, scandal ultimately failed to really um, end up with anyone um, being held accountable. 
and failed to properly untangle the structural problems at the root of it. Now, the uh, inquiry that we were, that the, the inquiry that the Senate committee was inquiring into should have been able to, to dissect exactly why um, the Australian Wheat Board, sorry, the, the Senate inquiry should have been able to dissect exactly why the investigation and actions against the Australian Wheat Board were so ineffective, so ineffectual in the end. And, um, uh, but, but we were not able to do that. So the Australian Greens um, presented a minority report to that particular committee and into that. Um, uh, oil for food scandal um, investigation um, report, and we recommended that the Australian Commission for Law Enforcement Integrity launch a far-reaching inquiry into what we saw to be the structural failings in both the Australian Federal Police and the Australian Securities Investment Commission in uh, being able to prosecute wrongdoers in relation to the oil for food scandal. But unfortunately, and perhaps unsurprisingly, um, the Australian Greens' recommendation in the minority report hasn't been taken up. Ultimately, on that committee, we saw the major parties, the old parties, united to protect uh, the Australian Federal Police and the Department of Foreign Affairs from the scrutiny that was required to get to the bottom of it. Um, uh, and one can only speculate. In fact, there was um, evidence before that inquiry, and it's available for people to have a look at. Um, that there were higher powers and higher interests that were involved that uh, were being protected. It's, it's, it's important to note that the period of the investigation into the Australian Wheat Board involved both the Howard government and subsequently the Rudd government. And it was, interest, it was, um, it was notable how little interest there was from the members of the committee who had allegiance to those governments in digging too deeply in a way that could potentially jeopardise the standing of either party or any of the personalities who might still hold political office to this day. The political makeup of the uh, references committee on that occasion was ultimately, ultimately did undermine the effectiveness of our inquiry, and it became clear that it's here that a federal ICAC could play its role. Not only would a standing body with large powers of information procurement and the compulsion of testimony be able to overcome particular difficulties that we faced and that were faced in relation to the original investigation into the uh, Australian Wheat Board scandal, but it would also have more resources and time to properly pursue the case. Senate committees, um, by their nature, are peopled with senators who have many other demands on their time and resources, not to mention uh, other loyalty demands on their um, attention as well. And so, of course, Senate committees, while often doing very, very good work, um, can sometimes be very limited in what they can achieve, particularly if they're investigating um, a controversial and contentious and highly um, risky political uh, matter. A federal ICAC would mean that no longer would um, partisan politics get in the way of these sorts of investigations and of the Australian people getting the transparent and open government they deserve, both in our parliament and in our federal departmental bodies. So I guess that leaves the question then, why is it that um, the, the coalition and the Labor Party, the two old players, don't support this Greens proposal? There's lots of rhetoric around why it's too hard and why it won't work, but, but the evidence is mounting all the time that we need, that, that the current system we have is broken, that we need to fix it, that we need an effective, impartial and powerful body to be able to genuinely investigate issues that are arising in relation to the behaviour of political parties, the behaviour of federal politicians and the, and the, the behaviour of federal departments and agencies as well. And I guess in the end, whenever we get this kind of um, resistance, this kind of obfuscation, this kind of um, apologist response to something that seems to be such a clearly good idea, is you have to wonder what is it that they have to hide. Thank you.